As you remain standing, we are moving into the greatest portion of this service or any apostolic service, and that is the preaching of the word of the Lord. And certainly we stand here humbly, humbly yet boldly, understanding who he is and acknowledging the power of God that is resident in our lives here and now. To our soloist's outstanding presentation of God's word in song. You blessed us. Thank you for coming. And please send your thanks to Bishop Robinson for allowing you to come and share your angelic voice with us here at Zion today. Amen. If you would, and I pray that I'm not before you long today. Somebody said, well, you already preached your first sermon. But I got another one. Amen. So in your Bibles from the book of Matthew, chapter 13, just two verses in your hearing, verses 45 and 46. Matthew chapter 13, 45 and 46. Those of you that have your word, would you look around you to see if the person either on the left or the right hand has the word of God? If not, won't you be so kind as to share God's word with them? Man, to those, it uh, just appears to be a bit echoey with, uh, with the uh, microphonics. And um, if we could uh, take some of that echo out, um, we would certainly appreciate it in Jesus' name. And the word of the Lord reads thusly. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls who then, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Who, when he had found one pearl of great price, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. For a few moments this morning, I want to talk about the very simplistic uh, title, uh, The Pearls of God. The Pearls of God. Dear kind and gracious Father, once again, we take this time to express unto you our gratitude, our thanks, our appreciation that you've allowed us to come into your house one more time where there is peace, where there is safety, where there is the sanctity of your presence. We honor you today because you're God. You have been good, you have been kind, you have been merciful, you have been gracious. You've been a friend that sticks closer than any brother. You've been our joy in sorrow. You've been the lifter of our head and the mender of our brokenness. So we honor you as our God and our soon coming King. Once again, Father, we pray that this atmosphere will be charged with your anointed presence, that all flesh would be silent before you, and that your glory can be revealed among us. Give now your servant clarity of speech, the ability to impart wisdom and knowledge and information, but most of all, divine revelation and we'll give you praise we'll give you glory and honor because it belongs to you in jesus name amen you may be seated in the presence of god the pearls of god i'm going to be talking to you today so as i minister in the word of god I want your ears to be open your spirit to be tuned to what god is saying unto the church today when when you read the parable of uh, the pearl, we, we often have read that in the Bible. Anybody who spends some time reading your word, uh, you understand uh, 
that this is a message that speaks about excellence. And so when we read about the pearl, there are many preachers and even Bible theologians uh, who interpret the story by saying that the pearl represents salvation and the buyer of the pearl is a sinner. Uh, in other words, they believe that the sinner is doing all that he, they can to purchase and obtain uh, salvation. In other words, they are working hard to pay any price to make sure that their soul is saved. However, that would mean that salvation is based upon works, which we know the Bible plainly and emphatically refutes. Remember, it is the Apostle Paul who tells us in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, he says, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Then he says, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now please understand that there is no work that you can do to get saved. But you have to do works in order to stay saved. Therefore, the true interpretation of this parable is this. The merchant is Jesus Christ. and The pearl is the church, or in other words, the body of his baptized believers. And when we understand that, there was a great price that was paid, and that was paid by God, manifested in flesh as Jesus, uh, who through his own excruciating, humiliating, and painful death that he experienced on Calvary. Therefore, it is God who was willing to pay any price to save the world from their sins and to offer them the pearl of eternal life instead. Uh, now, there are many great lessons given in the Bible that are drawn from the example of nature. God often uses natural examples to portray a spiritual application. Among them are something small called the ant. When you look at Proverbs chapter number 6, the Bible says in verse 6, Go to the ant, thou sluggard or slothful, or indolent, or lazy person, and consider her ways, and be wise. Uh, then we have the bees and the honey, not the bees and the birds, uh, but the bees and the honey, uh, and the honey that the bees produce, uh, uh, found in Proverbs chapter 24 and verse number 13 that says, My son, eat thou the honey, uh, because it is good, and the honeycomb, which is sweet, to thy taste. Uh, when you look at that, the application of the honey speaks to the sweetness of God's word, which then, when consumed, brings about spiritual health and well being. Uh, it is verified in Psalms chapter 19, verses 7 through 10, uh, where the Bible says, The law of the Lord, or the word of the Lord, is perfect, uh, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Uh, it says, The statutes or the mandates of the Lord are right. Uh, it rejoices the hearts, and the commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Uh, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever, and the judgments of the Lord uh, are true and righteous altogether. Here it is, uh, verse number 10. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, uh, and sweeter also than the honey and the honeycomb. Uh, and so whenever we speak about the honey, it speaks about uh, the prosperity, the production, uh, and the blessedness of ingesting uh, the word of the Lord. Uh, also, it speaks about when we look at the nature that God uses to bring about a spiritual application. Uh, uh, the eagles in Isaiah 40 and 31, a very familiar passage of scripture where the Bible says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Uh, uh, the rainbow we find as an example in Genesis chapter 9 verses 13 through 15 um, uh, God uses it as a sign that he would not destroy the earth again by water uh, and there are many more but I will leave this final one with you there um, and that's Balaam's donkey in Genesis chapter 22 verse number 21
22 through 31, um, where God spoke to the donkey to send a message uh, to Balaam to stop in the direction that he was going and heed uh, the very word of God. Listen, brothers and sisters, God can and will use anything uh, that he wants to use in order to get his message uh, across to people who won't hear it coming uh, from the pulpit. Uh, uh, but today, brothers and sisters, uh, I'm going to speak to you about the price that God paid uh, a man for his pearls. Uh, there's something very interesting about pearls in the message today, and that is uh, the pearl is a product of suffering. Anybody ever suffered in here today? Uh, the pearl is a product of suffering, and one of the most important things uh, about the suffering is that God has ordered it uh, in order to make you and mold you and shape you into the measure and the stature uh, of the men and women of God that he has called for you to be. Uh, it happens when an oyster, a, a, a shell gets a, a grain of sand or, or something I like to call it that's more important. It's not just a grain of sand, uh, uh, but those who study the making of pearls call it an irritant. Uh, trapped in the flesh, the soft flesh, uh, called the mantle that is attached to the shell. Uh, and this piece of sand or other substance irritates uh, the tender oyster and the oyster responds by coating the grain of sand uh, or whatever the irritant is with layer upon layer uh, of a substance called nicre. Uh, nicre which is basically, hear me good, saliva and calcium. Uh, don't sound real good does it? But uh, that's what the pearls are made of. This nicre is nothing more than saliva and calcium. Uh, I find that interesting because it appears to be a shadow and a type uh, of God because calcium comes from the earth uh, and saliva is a watery substance that is secreted uh, by the glands of the mouth. Uh, it is noteworthy because in the beginning when God created man, uh, according to Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 7, the Bible says uh, that God formed man first of all of the dust of the ground, that's the earth, uh, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Uh, look at somebody real quick and tell them this is a teaching lesson. Uh, we already shouted and gave God some praise. Uh, and so he breathes into him the breath of life. Within that breath there is water. Uh, why do you say that? Because it's important to know and to understand uh, that your breath has more than just carbon dioxide. Uh, when you exhale it, uh, when it comes out of you, but it also has something called nitrogen oxygen and argon uh, which creates a water vapor in your breath uh, that's why sometimes when you're talking to folk uh, and they're getting all up in your grill getting too close uh, and you tell them to back away because the vapors are spraying on you uh, and so we have this water that comes out uh, of God when he breathes into man the breath of life and man uh, now becomes a living soul uh, consequently the making of the pearl the oyster is taking uh, the earth and the water to create uh, the pearl from the nicre uh, the saliva and the calcium uh, nicre is also the same substance that coats uh, the inside of the oyster shell which now creates what is called the mother of pearl uh, oh here's me good somebody the mother of pearl uh, and when we have the mother of pearl pearl. It differentiates between the pearl gemstone uh, that some of y'all have around your neck. At least uh, you thought it was a pearl when you bought it. Uh, uh, it creates the pearl gemstone. Uh, and the mother of pearl is the placement where it is located uh, and for what purpose uh, a man it is created. Uh, hear me now. Uh, the mother of pearl is formed on the inner linings of the shell. Uh, while the pearl gemstone is created uh, when a foreign object enters the shell uh, and the molox or the muscle uh, which is an invertebrate which means it doesn't have no backbone uh, uh, sometimes that's the way that we are uh, uh, you need to put something in your back and stand
stand up and call on Jesus and not allow yourself to be in a place where you identify one way one day and another way another day do I have anybody in the house that will stand up and tell the world that I still believe in God I still bless him I still serve him I still praise him I still magnify him I still glorify him I still lift him up because I recognize that God is the best thing that has ever happened unto me and so now the pearl gemstone is created whenever there is an irritant that moves into the tender sacred place of the oyster shell and brothers and sisters it doesn't matter what the irritant enters into the shell as it could be sand it could be dirt it could be rubbish or dead stuff or pieces of other fish but in order to protect the integrity of the mother of pearl it surrounds and buries the irritant with more nicre which is the essence of who and what the mother of pearl is hear me real good say you see I might be giving you this biological lesson but what you have to really understand is when we came to God we were an irritant we were an irritant to God because of his holiness and his righteousness and because we thought we were all that sometimes and a bag of chips God began to tell us that all of your righteousnesses are as filthy rags I don't care how pure as the driven snow you thought you were I don't care if you never smoked or drank or never went outside of the confines of who you are the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God so when you came to him everybody in here was an irritant to God it was not within the nature of God a man to bring you in as you are and leave you as you are but just like the mother of pearl when you come to him he begins to hide you in the blood he begins to hide you in his righteousness and hide you in his glory and hide you in his peace and begin to rewrite your story that you were nothing before you came to God but look at your neighbor real quick and tell him look at me now I'm a product of God's love I'm a product of God's grace his mercy and his peace if you feel like I feel today put your hands together and give God the best praise that you've given him all week long and somebody shout glory you see brothers and sisters the prerequisite for becoming a pearl is that you have to learn how to come you see when you come uh, you're open to what God wants to do in your life uh, that's why thank you sir uh, that's why the prophet Isaiah writes uh, in 55 and 1 uh, he says ho everyone uh, that thirst is come ye to the waters uh, and he that hath no money uh, come ye and buy uh, in other words you don't have to be a millionaire uh, you don't have to have money in the bank uh, you can be poor busted and disgusted and still come to God because God says all you have to do is come don't try to fix it up don't try to get right just come as you are and when you come as you are God's going to put you in the mother of his pearl and God's going to put something on you that will protect you while God's doing a work in your life how many in here remember huh, when you were a wretch undone huh, when you didn't get your priorities in the right place huh, you were sick huh, you were outlandish in the things you thought and said huh, you didn't know you're up from your down your beginning from your end huh, you were a loser huh, uh, but yet when you came to the church huh, nobody tried huh, to qualify you huh, before you came to the altar huh, all 
all that was said uh, is come unto me uh, all ye that labor and are heavy laden uh, and I will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn of me uh, for I am meek and lowly of heart uh, and ye shall find rest for your souls uh, I told you I'm not going to be here long today uh, oh glory to God but I need somebody to put your hands together right now uh, and give your God uh, some praise uh, give your God some glory give God some honor lift your voice uh, like a trumpet and shout unto God uh, with the voice of triumph uh, I feel like giving uh, God some praise uh, hallelujah it was prophesied uh, by the prophet Joel uh, in 2 and 32 uh, and Joel said referring uh, to the prophetic occurrence in the New Testament uh, he said it like this and it shall come to pass uh, that whosoever shall call uh, on the name of the Lord uh, they shall be delivered uh, brothers and sisters uh, a pearl cannot be created uh, unless an irritant uh, enters into the oyster uh, you cannot become uh, what God dreamed for you to be uh, before the foundation of the world uh, unless you take uh, yourself uh, out of yourself uh, and walk into the presence of God uh, the word of God tells us in Romans 3 and 23 uh, for all have sinned uh, and come short uh, of the glory of God uh, at the moment the irritant enters uh, into the shell of the oyster uh, the oyster can do one of two things uh, it can ignore the source uh, of the irritation uh, which probably means uh, it's going to die uh, but when you uh, are the love of God uh, and God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son uh, that whosoever believeth in him uh, should not perish uh, but have everlasting life uh, I need you to find somebody and tell them look at me uh, I'm the love of God uh, I might not look like it uh, I might not dress like it uh, I might not act like it uh, but Jesus loves me uh, this I know uh, for the Bible uh, tells me so uh, I came as an irritant uh, I came out as a pearl uh, and God's going to get some glory uh, and some honor out of my life uh, I don't look like it right now uh, but please be patient with me uh, God's not through with me yet uh, God's going to get glory uh, and honor out of my life uh, somebody put your hands together uh, and give your God uh, some praise uh, instead of God destroying the irritant uh, God now transforms it uh, and you become the very embodiment uh, the mind and the wheel of God uh, that's why the Bible says uh, when you get into the presence of God uh, when you can lay prostrate before the Lord uh, when you can lift your hands and give him praise uh, when you can bow before him uh, when you can open your mouth and shout unto God uh, with the voice of triumph uh, God begins to transform uh, your irritant life uh, that's why Paul writes uh, in 2 Corinthians 3 and 18 uh, but we all with open face uh, beholding as a glass uh, the glory of God uh, we are changed into the same image uh, from glory to glory uh, even as the spirit of the Lord uh, what are you saying pastor uh, I want to be more like Jesus uh, every day uh, I'm working on my building uh, I'm putting things in order uh, I fail sometimes I messed up sometimes uh, I did some things I'm not uh, uh, so proud of uh, I did some things that I'm ashamed of uh, but God's not through with me yet uh, 
I'm looking for God uh, to mold me and to make me uh, into the glorious thing uh, that God has in his mind for me. Uh, and so, in other words, uh, the mother of pearl uh, that puts the nicker around the irritant, uh, it turns something that was worthless uh, into something that was priceless. Uh, what do I mean by priceless? Uh, the final condition of the pearl uh, is commensurate or equal uh, with the final state uh, of the value of our souls. Uh, Matthew 16 and 26 tells us, uh, for what is a man profited uh, if he shall gain the whole world uh, and lose his soul? Uh, what shall a man give in exchange uh, for his soul? Uh, so consequently, brothers and sisters, uh, the end result of this foreign object uh, that is against the righteousness and the holiness of God uh, being encased in the nicker uh, after a period of time uh, a pearl is getting ready to come forth uh, hallelujah to God uh, and God uh, is working on you right now uh, and so brothers and sisters uh, the Bible tells us uh, that even when the enemy comes in like a flood huh? the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against it huh? I know sometimes huh? it feels like you're overcome huh? and it feels like you can't lift your head above water huh? and it feels like everything is caving huh? in on you huh? but I just rose to encourage you huh? that the God you serve huh? is able to do exceedingly huh? abundantly above all that you can ask go think uh, according to the power uh, that's on the inside of you uh, and so when the enemy comes uh, God gave us the key uh, the power uh, the authority uh, the wherewithal uh, to meet the devil and put him up under our feet uh, the Bible says uh, when God spoke to Peter uh, who had failed God miserably uh, and God says I'm going to give you another chance uh, he said, I'm going to give you uh, the keys to the kingdom. Uh, he told him, thou art Peter. Uh, and upon this rock, uh, I will build my church. Uh, and the gates of hell uh, shall not prevail. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, the gates of hell cannot prevail. Uh, that word prevail uh, comes from a Greek word, uh, kataskuo, uh, which means the gates cannot overpower you. Uh, your your gates cannot be victorious over you. Huh? The gates that the devil huh, is welding against you huh, cannot incarcerate you. Huh? They cannot put you in bondage. Huh? They will not prevail. Huh? That means God has given you the power huh, and the authority huh, to speak those things that be not huh, as though they were. Huh? I hear you real good right now, God. Huh? I need somebody to open your mouth huh? and and declare your victory huh? right now in Jesus name huh? I need somebody to tell the adversary huh? it won't work huh? I've got power huh? I've got authority huh? and I've got God on my side huh? and I'm getting ready to get up out huh? of this mess that I am huh? and God's going to get some glory huh? out of my life huh? can I get somebody to put your hands together one more time huh? I ain't asked you to touch nobody. Huh? I ain't asking you to grab your neighbor. Huh? All I'm asking you is to open your mouth huh? like a trumpet huh? and lift your voice huh? and give God the best praise. Huh? You've given him all week long huh? and somebody shout your glory. Give your God some praise. The church is born out of suffering. The church is born out of pain. The church is born out of folks talking about you and misusing you and treating you huh, like everything but a child of God. That's where God is making you. Evangelist 
The pearl is formed out of something that's worthless. What value do we have to God? I don't care how pretty you look in your brand new dress or how soon you got your hair fried, dyed, and laid to the side. What I want you to understand is that you are nothing until God makes you something. The pearl is formed from junk. Worthless material. And so we must understand that when God begins to make us, to shape us and to mold us. Look at somebody one more time. Don't grab them. And tell them it takes time. I said it takes time for God to do his work in me. Because I was so messed up. I was so discombobulated. My mind was so worked out. I thought more of myself than I should have. I ran away my friends. Folks talked about me because uh, I was like John the Baptist uh, running around eating locusts and wild honey. Uh, uh, brothers and sisters, I was a mess. But God saw something in me. And all God wants you to do is work your way into his presence. That's all God wants you to get into his presence. Because uh, as soon as you get into his presence, uh, God's going to begin to shape you and to make you uh, and turn you into something that's priceless in the eyes of the world. Uh, therefore, when you look at the Apostle Paul, he writes uh, in Philippians 1 and 6, being confident of this one thing, that he that has begun uh, a good work in you will perform it uh, unto the day of Jesus Christ. Uh, God's working on me. He's working on you. Oh, yes. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm standing up here, and you're looking at an imperfect work of God. But you're also looking at God working on me. I didn't do everything right in 15 years. I made some mistakes. I did some things incorrect. And some stuff has hurt people. And people have hurt me, but I'm not talking about folk that have hurt me. But I've hurt some folk because I was ignorant of how huh, to handle the situation huh? but God is not through with me yet huh? I've got 15 more years huh, to work it out huh, and give God some glory huh? I've got 15 more years huh, to fall flat on my face huh, and prostrate before God huh, and tell God I'm sorry huh? I'm sorry God huh? work on me huh? and bring me to the place huh? where you can get the glory and the honor out of my life. If I've got about 50 folk that feel like I feel, jump up on your feet. Brother Leonard, Leon, lift forward and give your God a radical praise. Give God a crazy praise. Give God a stupid praise. Give God a praise that will shake the foundations of hell and cause the angels to rejoice come on church give God some praise Instead of us pointing the finger uh, at somebody else, uh, Paul says that every man examine yourself, uh, whether you be in the faith. Uh, stop looking at other folk uh, and trying to tell them what to put on uh, and what to take off uh, and how to govern yourself, uh, their selves. Uh, Paul says examine yourself. Uh, ask God to turn the searchlight, uh, the brilliance of his essence uh, on you uh, and Father, uh, if you find anything uh, that shouldn't be, uh, take it out uh, and strengthen me. Uh, I want to be right. Uh, I want to be saved. Uh, I want to be whole. Uh, and so, brothers and sisters, uh, you have to understand uh, that you are valuable to God. Uh, you have value to God. Uh, pearls can be worth uh, a fortune. Uh, Scientists uh, say that one pearl uh, can be found, a good pearl, uh, a 
perfect pearl huh, can be found in every 10,000 oysters. Huh, so you can go through 10,000 oysters huh, and all of a sudden huh, you find one huh, that's like no other. Huh, you find one huh, that's been through the storm. Huh, you find one huh, that hasn't folded huh, under the pressure huh, of the storms of life. Huh, you find a pearl huh, that's had some sickness uh, in their life. Uh, you find a pearl uh, that's been broke uh, with no money in the bank. Uh, you find a pearl uh, that folks have talked about uh, and run down like a dirty dog. Uh, and God says, that's the one uh, that I want. Uh, that's the one uh, that the pressures of life uh, have formed uh, into a goodly pearl. Uh, and God says, uh, I will take all all that I have uh, know ye not uh, that you have been bought with a price uh, you have been bought with the blood of God uh, and therefore you're valuable uh, in the eyes of God uh, do I have some folk uh, that recognize uh, I'm worth something uh, in the eyes of God uh, I've been through something uh, I've had to cry sometime uh, but they uh, that go about uh, so Sowing seed huh, and weeping. Huh, God's getting ready to bless you huh, above and beyond measure. Huh, I need you to jump up on your feet huh, right now huh, and give your God huh, a crazy praise. Huh. Come on, church. Huh, bless the Lord huh, at all times. Huh, and let us praise huh, continually be in your mouth huh, and shout. Shout glory. God's looking for pearls. God's looking for folk that been through something. God's looking for people that have not folded and thrown up their hands because you know that God's working on you. Sit down for a moment. I'm really done right now. God's been working on the unity of Zion. How many know that when pearls, Sister Veronica, are strung together, they're more valuable? See, one pearl, we look at it and say, isn't that a beautiful pearl? But when you start stringing pearls together, oh, hallelujah, this is the only time we're going to touch somebody. <laughs> when you start stringing pearls together, oh, hallelujah, huh? and, and you find another pearl, huh? your value huh, increases. Huh? When one pearl huh, strings to another, those some beautiful pearls huh, you got around your neck. Huh? But when pearls huh, start stringing together, huh, you don't know huh, how valuable you are. Huh? You don't know huh, how priceless you are. Huh? When pearls string together, huh, the devil gets angry huh, and he wants to destroy huh, what God has put together. Huh? But look at your neighbor huh, and tell them, huh, we got it together. Huh? We have it together. Huh? And the more pearls huh, that start stringing together, huh, the more beautiful huh, the church of God becomes huh, when the devil huh, cannot divide us, huh, when the devil huh, cannot separate us. Huh, we become huh, the pearls huh, that God gets glory out of us. Come on, church, and give him some praise. God's choosing pearls. But he's not choosing you to be a loner. Because a single pearl reflects its own glory. So everybody's attention is on the one pearl. But when God begins to put his church together, 
I hear you, Jesus. This is a message to Zion that God says everything that you have been through is not for you to shine by yourself. But God allowed the church to go through it that God can string pearls together. Goodly pearls. And what is it about these pearls? Well, it seems to me when you get to heaven, there's going to be some gates up there. And they're going to be made out of pearls. I don't know if those are literal gates. Because when you get to heaven, why do we need literal gates in heaven to keep somebody in or somebody out? Ain't going to be no mess up there. So I believe the pearls are right here on earth. I believe that the pearls are the body of baptized believers. I believe that the pearls are those that have been pressured in life and went through something and became victorious. Look at somebody real quick and tell them I'm a pearl of God. First lady, I didn't want you to think I was on you. She said, yes, you were. I was really talking about, and I want to reestablish, the impersonalization of the church. That we can come to church and don't want to touch nobody and nobody to touch us. As if in the sanctity of the sanctuary, the devil can attack you with a disease. If he can attack you here, what hope do we have outside of the sanctuary? You better be confident when I come in here, washed in the blood, there's nothing the devil can do to hurt or harm me. That we will be unified so that God can be glorified. Hallelujah. I'm just trying to help you to understand don't let the world dictate to you how the church and the family of God interacts with one another. Y'all better hear me. Whoever wants to, you can go put it on Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, whatever you want. I'll still stand upon that word. We need to be unified. And the only way you can be unified, you have to be integral with one another. God's still looking for pearls. If there's anybody in here that's never had the privilege of being water baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, this is your opportunity to come down to this altar. Let God save you. Let him bless you. Come as you are. Come in your irritant state. We all were irritants before God because all of our self-righteousnesses were as filthy rags. Don't care how good we thought we were. We were all irritants before God covered us in the blood and formed us and shaped us into who we are right now. God's doing something in desire. I told you a few weeks ago, God's doing something. God's transforming this church. God's transforming our mindsets. And brothers and sisters, it starts with the planting and not just sowing. Some of us have lived by the mantra that yeah, I, I told somebody, I, I passed out a track. I said something to somebody on the bus while I was walking through the supermarket. I said something. But Evangelist Nickens, that's scattering seed. God wants us to plant seeds. He wants us to do as the Bible says, go out into the highways and hedges and compel men and women to come unto the Lord and be saved. That's planting, not just sowing. God says by the act of sowing, 
this church will begin to grow to the place of capacity. I know it's right. I know what God said. And I know it's going to happen. If there's somebody here today that needs prayer, you have been struggling with something, you're at a crossroads where you need to make a definite decision, and you know you need a direct word from God, you then have to understand the importance of more than one, that God is able, I said he's able, when there are two or three gathered together in his name, that he promises to be in the midst of them. I want you to get up and come down. Let us pray for you. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Don't feel conspicuous. Don't feel like everybody's eyes are on you because we all have been in a place where we didn't care what was going on, who was looking at us. We knew we needed prayer. God bless these children. The Bible says a little child shall lead them. Coming two pearls walking down the aisle. Unity, harmony, togetherness. Are there others that will come? We're getting ready to pray. Come, come. Let the Lord bless you real good. I know God's speaking to somebody right now. This is a church that will glorify God. This is a church that will not compromise the word of God. This is a church that will walk circumspectly before God. This is a church that will hold up the standard of holiness and righteousness. Holding up the standard of holiness and righteousness does not mean denigrating people, but leading them to a higher standard of living and productivity in God. Let the church stand. We're getting ready to pray right now. Now this is the time I'm going to ask you to grab somebody by the hand. That we will send power from hand to hand and from breast to breast. All together. All together. All together. Dear kind and gracious Father, once again we take this time to express unto your deep and profound appreciation for the privilege, the opportunity to stand before your presence and to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. For your name has power, your name has healing, your name has deliverance attached. And that when we call on the name of Jesus, Demons will bow, sickness will flee, problems uh, will suddenly dissipate because of the power and the authority of your name. Right now, Father, those who have come down to this altar, who have pressed their way, who in the irritants of their life want to walk into your presence, so that whatever it is that is causing consternation, God, you can remedy it. You can remove it and cause them to be made whole, to be made clean, and to become like you are. I pray for them now, Father. I pray for every need that is represented. I pray that you would open up the windows of heaven and pour them out blessings. I pray, Father, that you would continue to order their steps in you. I pray. That God, their righteousness, your righteousness, uh, they will align themselves with your righteousness and your holiness. Uh, that God, we will forget those things which are behind and reach forth unto those things, the promises uh, that are yet before us. And we will hold with a tenacity to your unchanging hands and the promises of God which are yea and amen as never before. Because we recognize, God, you're not a man that you should lie nor the son of man that you should repent. If you said it. You shall do it, 
and it will come to pass. So we're standing upon the solidarity of your word. We're standing upon your promises. We're believing in spite of doubt. We're stretching ourselves, Father, because we know you're able to do all things but fail. Now, Father, I pray for your children. I pray for this church. I pray for revival. I pray for encouragement. I pray for open windows in heaven huh, and open doors on earth huh, that we can walk through and you can pour out blessings huh, and that we can become all that you have dreamed for us to be. I, debind, I bind the works of the adversary that the spirit of the living God might move and have free course in this place. Huh. Grant unto us the very treasures of heaven and God will be careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor forgive us for our sins our trespasses and restore unto us the place of prominence power presence and relationship with you and we'll give you all the praise the glory and the honor because it belongs to you these blessings and prayers we ask in jesus name in jesus name amen and amen